Today on Lockdown Red Wings, how can Detroit bounce back ahead of its game against the Montreal Canadiens? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scott is host over at Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And on today's episode, guys, uh, kind of a slow news day uh, in regards to the Red Wings. We're going to mostly <laughs> talk about uh, Derek Lalonde's media availability that took place after the practice on Wednesday. Uh, he talked about and was asked about the goalie situation, Robbie Fabry, uh, getting off to better starts, simplifying the game, things of that nature. And then we'll finish off previewing the game against the Montreal Canadiens. So just mostly keeping you guys up to speed with news and notes regarding the team. Um, first and foremost, Scotty, I guess we can go in chronological order unless you have anything you want to say before we begin. No, no. I, I Yeah, I mean, there, there is some interesting conversations surrounding – I mean, we'll talk about the the goalie rotation thing. We kind of brought that up a little bit yesterday, but not too much. Um, and then, yeah, obviously these next two games are are like big bounce back games, given how bad you just looked. So, gotcha. Uh, so yeah, with this one, this media availability that was held today, as of recording this, which is Wednesday, um, Derek Lalonde was asked specifically about, you know, players who were available, who are hurt and whatnot, which is pretty stock standard stuff you'll see in most media availabilities. And of course, Robbie Fabry on Thursday's game is going to be, let's, let's say he's listed as questionable right well, now. Yeah. Like th that was the word, the word that was used by uh, Lalonde and reporters alike was iffy. I don't know if I've ever uh, in fantasy football. I want to see an I next to some players' names next week. All right, <laughs> probable, questionable, doubtful, out, IR, and iffy. Yes. Um. But uh, yeah, it, it they did make it sound like the 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 beat writers we have here, um, and uh, Lalone both kind of insinuated that the iffiness was more due to uh, just conditioning and and the fact that you know like trying to ease him back into. Uh, a, a full, I don't know, like all, what am I trying to say? Like no limitations type of uh, like player when it comes to playing every single night and, and less to do with like, he still actually has a nagging injury going on. But. Yeah. I mean, that's what Lalone said specifically was. And cause when I first saw the tweet from Helene St. James, I was like, Oh man, he's hurt again. Like it, it literally cannot catch a break. And that this joke just kind of keeps will not stop. In the fact that he literally cannot stay healthy. Like the meme writes itself with Fab Fabry. But the reality was, is Lone said that rehabbing and training is a lot different. Um, that he's fully rehabbed from his injury, but getting him back up to game speed is what's making him iffy as he continues to like get continue to get healthy. So it's it's it sounded to me, my interpretation was it was less so about the injury and more so about making sure he's like in game shape after mm -hmm. having had what a month off pretty much. Yeah. At least eh, about a month, three maybe. weeks, three weeks. We started in the middle of October. So about three weeks off making sure you can get back into game shape. So, I mean, that is what it is. It, it's still I just, the guy can't catch a break. And I know we say that all the time, but it's so extremely true. And I did have that thought in the back of my mind when I first saw that tweet and I had interpreted it as he's like hurt again, that possibly like, do we, when do we, when do we, pull the plug you know and that's an awful thing to say and you're not going to just cut him in the middle of the season he's under contract and you're going to keep playing him right until that contract's up whenever well, also, he's also just you don't want to eat that dead money <laughs> right and and when it comes to like money and and when it most importantly comes to like roster spots just put him on the ir like you know what i mean like I that, mean, that, if they if they were to like if there's a big picture like we're just like pulling the plug on this because he's always going to get hurt. It's going to happen in the off season. Like yes. they, they'll just keep him on the IR. If <laughs> like, if it, it like reg in season, they'll, they'll just keep him on the list. Like it's not, you know what I mean? That they, they're not going to, they're not I mean, going to pull the plug in November. That, that would be an off season thing. Assuming he can be medically approved to be on the IR. Cause I believe that you can't just place a guy in the IR. I think you have to, no, be no, no. I, but yeah, but if he's healthy, he's going to play. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So, but yeah, the only reason that would happen is if he like kept getting hurt so much 
that they were like, this dude's just never going to be healthy. See ya. And they wouldn't, again, they wouldn't come to that conclusion until the off season because they're just going to, if he's hurt, they're just going to put him on the IR. Yeah. I just hate having that thought though, because I really like Robbie Fabry when he's healthy and he's got one of those stories that so he's got one of those stories that you're just constantly always rooting for. But at a certain point, I mean, and we talk about it, availability is a skill too. And he, that is a skill that he lacks um, because of the injury history. That's not his own fault, right? That's not his fault. You can't pin that on him, but you need to ha- be able to have players reliably in the lineup. And he has not done that in the entirety of his Red Wings tenure, even though when he is in the lineup, he's a really good middle six forward for the Detroit yeah. Red Wings. It just gets really frustrating. I mean, you see the tweet like that and you immediately think, you know, it's so over again with Robbie Fabry. Luckily, the truth was more about him getting back up to game speed. So in this instance, he's iffy because they want to make sure he's back up to game speed, not because he's hurt again. Yeah. Though it does sound mm-hmm. like he is still battling a little bit from that that injury. Um, speaking of injuries, uh, Lalone says that he expects Dylan Larkin to play tomorrow. He's still battling some bumps and bruises that looked like he took the most of during the game against the Boston Bruins. I mean, he one took that really nasty spill into the boards. I had him go down the tunnel, but also a lot of cross checks, uh, getting physical wrestling on the ice with a couple different players as well. He was getting beat up in that game, but it looks like nothing is serious and that he should be able to play in uh, the game against Montreal. And I, I, that's a good thing, Scotty, because when it comes to my three keys of the games and three keys, three keys of the game, rather, when we get to that, when we preview the Montreal Canadiens, there's a lot that has to do with Dylan Larkin and his line. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I mean, he was also, I don't think it was the Rangers game. I think it was the Bruins game, but one of the last two games going into it too, they were kind of like, yeah, like he's, he's probably going to play, but you know, a little banged up that I think that's just kind of mid season stuff. And yeah, by all accounts, it looks like he's going to play and it's not going to be that big of a deal with it, which is, is yeah, obviously good. We, we want our captain and, and, uh, <laughs> our, our best point producer to play that that's, uh, that's in probably the keys to the game for nearly every game. Also yeah. in regards to just closing a book on Fabry, you know, it's frustrating for us, but I'm, I'm very, very sure that it's very frustrating for him to not be able to consistently be on the ice too. No, no. Why would he care? It's not like this right. is livelihood. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, now we get into the more interesting stuff. Uh, player reports there, there are done. Um, Lolan was asked about the slow starts the team has been having and why it seems the team can't get going in the first period. And then in the third period, they kind of find their groove. Someone even referenced the stat that they are last place in the league in first period goals. Um, and they're first and third. Period. <laughs> which is crazy. That's so nuts. Uh, and Derek Lone basically mentioned that the, in his eyes, they're not playing a simple enough game. You look at what the Rangers were doing versus what the Red Wings weren't doing. And he said that the Rangers were playing a very simple brand of hockey. It was aggressiveness leading to turnovers from the Ranger or the Red Wings, rather leading to penalties, this, that, and the other. Basically, he really wants the Red Wings. And we talked about this, I think, a little bit in yesterday's episode, but like simplifying the game, not doing too much. And I remember watching the first period of that hockey game. We we, we kind of glossed over everything that went wrong in that game because everything went wrong. Uh, but I mean, the the turnovers and the passing were a huge issue in that game. And passing has been an ongoing issue throughout the season, honestly. Even when they were winning, a lot of the passes, for some reason, are just hopping over guys' sticks or going off the blade into the corner, um, or they're trying to force passes where there is no lane. And that's a continuing issue with the Red Wings. They're trying to do too much with the puck when if you just stay simple, and now we're into my opinion on it, not Lolone's. Um, if you just stay simple with it, things will work out better. And I, I mean, that is a philosophy I carry in, in every single level of hockey, obviously I've never played NHL level, but I have to imagine that if you playing it, if you're playing a simplified game of hockey and your players and your teammates are in the correct position, it's a lot easier than trying to force a pass through three guys for a breakaway. You know what I mean? I would imagine. I would imagine. And that's like, we talked about that a little bit on yesterday's show from the Rangers perspective, right? Like they were just, they, they, they everything they tried just like worked with ease. Like it wasn't, they weren't doing anything crazy. It wasn't some crazy concept. It was just get pucks deep, get pucks on that, baby. <laughs> like, I know that's like a, a meme now at this point, but like, it really wasn't too much more complicated than that, man. And like the Red Wings had zero answer. Well, and like, in my opinion, the biggest reason why that works for a team, like 
playing aggressive is great, right? Because you're putting the pressure on the other team. You're forcing turnovers. They did that. But that also doesn't work for your team unless the rest of your teammates are putting themselves in the correct spots. If they yeah. know their role, they know their position. And the Rangers did a fantastic job of that. And that's something the Red Wings have kind of struggled with too. It really sometimes feels like the Red Wings have trouble figuring out where they're supposed to be. Like the chemistry isn't clicking. And I know there's been some shuffling on the on the middle six and the fourth. Well, not the fourth line has been pretty stable last few weeks, the middle six in particular, but that was because they weren't scoring there. The team, I feel struggles so mightily with the simple plays because in a lot of times the players who you can't make the simple plays if the simple plays aren't there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And that comes with players knowing the system and knowing where to be. And that falls on coaching and it falls on players to like actually learn the system as well. So it, it's easy to say, you got to simplify the game, but in order to simplify the game, you got to know the system that you're trying to run. Agreed. So uh, we got to take a quick break, but when we return, we will continue this conversation. We will talk about the goalie rotation. Derek Lowen spoke about who so why they left him in and the possibility of Alex Lyon getting into the crease at some point in the near future. Uh, so stay tuned to segment two of lockdown Red Wings. Got to talk to you guys today about Jace Medical. Whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply shortage, you are covered. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply. Even ED generics for Cialis, Viagra, and Revatio prescriptions. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code LOCKDOWN at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer has, has had this to say about Jace. I'm thankful for their service. Supply chain issues caused me to have to cut my pills in half to have it. I ordered mo most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered antibiotic kit. I feel secure. Prices are lower than local pharmacy pharmacies i highly recommend this for everyone again that was a verified customer what they had to say about jace if you or someone you love would get would love some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily medication go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you remember to use promo code lockdown for 20 dollars off your first purchase Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are just, we were talking about the the Red Wings having to simplify their game to try and get out to faster starts at the beginning of games, trying to do too much um, when the team just isn't playing a unified front of hockey, a unified front to be able to be trying that brand of hockey where they're trying to be all flashy and make brilliant passes that aren't making their way through <laughs> and they're just giving away the puck to the other team. Um Scott, I don't know if you had any else, anything else you want to add on that, or we could just get right into the goalie situation. No, I think, I mean, we kind of talked about the goalie situation before the break too. I think that's a pretty natural transition. I, I, you know, I, like clearly who's and Reimer were always going to be like one and two going into the year and the carrying three goalies thing. You know, we talked about why or, or why that, did or didn't make sense and why they, they probably ended up doing it going into the year. And, and like, we've, we've covered all of that, but now we're at a point where we're like nearly a month into the season and this poor guy hasn't gotten a single opportunity. <laughs> Lion obviously has not gotten a single opportunity on NHL ice. And yet he's just sitting on the NHL roster. And, I, you know, I mean, we can, we can have a conversation about, about, who's so in Reimer, because I think that some people are already starting to have that conversation, but you know, when it comes to lion, I just, I don't, I don't understand why he wouldn't be your backup dressed goalie. Like literally every game that, that does not make a lick of sense in my head. Uh, the, the only reason as to, to why it like you wouldn't is if you're, Going in with like, okay, if Huso or Reimer gets hurt, then we need the next best goalie on the roster to go out there. That That is like the only counter that I think makes a lick of sense. Like if your goalie's getting pulled for, for performance, 
odds are the game's not going very well. And and <laughs> like putting in Vili Husso in the third period because Reimer's getting shelled or vice versa, like the, 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 that that does nothing for me. Why, why would you not give him some opportunities so that he actually has has some logged minutes and is like facing game speed, you know, caliber things like even if it is a period and a blowout like I I I truly don't understand why he's not dressed as the backup literally every game that that makes zero sense to me and we haven't had to pull a goalie yet so like it's not like he that would guarantee him playing time because it obviously wouldn't that doesn't happen very often uh so he'd still be sitting here with no minutes played um, but I, I guess I want to start off with that. Like before, you know, we can talk about like, how do we integrate him in? How do we get him a start here and there? We can have that conversation, but it, I genuinely think he should just be the dressed back of every game. Yeah. And I mean, that's an interesting concept that you bring up something that I hadn't thought about. And if I were to play the other side of it, I would imagine that it literally has to come down to proven versus unproven at this point. Um, you know, Reimer in his playing time that he's had at the Red Wings has been a really good uh, goalie for the Detroit Red Wings. So you would think that that would mean that if they do have to go to Reimer, he gives you a better option over somebody you haven't seen yet in your own NHL season and Alex Lyon. But that that doesn't... But if that's it's not, six to nothing, I want yes. the unproven guy to play. That's the whole point of being down six nothing, to give people opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to provide... For sure, maybe for sure. The only counter to, that... I, like, I understand if your starting goalie gets injured, then, like, you you want to keep yourself in the hockey game. I get that. That's, like, the only one that makes sense to me. Yeah, and they talked a lot about it because... Helene, I think it was Helene St. James, James. She asked, like, the bulk of the majority of the questions in this media availability. Uh, well, but they asked... He's fantastic, yeah. They asked about... She asked about whether or not, like, you have a conditioning stint coming up for Lion and loans like it's kind of a precarious time to do that with the Sweden series coming up. Like they're going to want to carry three, three goalies as they played two games back to back in Sweden on the 16th and the 17th. Yeah. So just having that extra goalie in case an injury does occur is going to be huge. So there, there right now is not a good time to send him down to Grand Rapids for a conditioning stint. Um, but meanwhile, like they have been actively trying to find a spot to get Alex Lyon to start. But the problem they've been having is James Reimer has been so good that he's been eating up all of those secondary starts. Yeah. Like, it's almost like they're waiting for Reimer to lay an egg. So they have a reason to start him, um, which, I mean, leads me to be like, OK, well, what about if Huso lays an egg? Why don't then you do Reimer lying back to back? If Reimer gets the win, then you just do lying and see how he does. Give Huso the added break because Huso laid a massive egg uh, against the New York Rangers. I mean, he's been letting in, he's let in a softie every single game, but then he usually recovers. He didn't so much recover in the game against the Rangers. Yeah. And he wasn't, again, he wasn't the only player who looked bad in that game. Every single player on the team looked bad in the Rangers game, but that first goal, I, I solely lay on his shoulders. I mean, he completely failed to seal the post. We talked about it yesterday. You guys can listen to yesterday's episode of lockdown Red Wings. If you want our full breakdown of uh Huso's game, but, uh, they didn't pull him after that game. And they asked him like, why, you know, down five, nothing. Why didn't you pull him? And Lalone said that, you know, that was a conversation they had and he was leaning that way in the second intermission, but it was actually Westland, their uh, goalie coach who was like, no, leave him in there. Like it's going to, it's important for who. So he, the Westland said that he believed it was important for Huso to finish that game, especially because as he saw it after the fifth goal against, he was starting to get his game back, which I guess he was kind of true because he didn't allow another goal throughout the rest of the game, but he already let five in again. Not every single goal was a completely on him. Some, there are two deflections, some team like teams breakdown. Oh, we might have turned a puck over behind the net to Lafreniere, which went out front to our Temi Panarin, th this, that, and the other. It was a team breakdown for sure. But you know, who obviously was another one of those players who did not play super well in that game either. Um, but so he, he said he obviously has final say, but he deferred to Westland on that one. And, um, he said, like, I understand, like for some goalies, sometimes it's about throwing a life preserver and giving, getting your goalie out there. But some goalies would rather finish the game because they feel like it's, it's their net, you know, mm -hmm. um, like getting pulled is almost a slap to the face rather than a life preserver. So they let Huto finish the game. And I guess to his credit, he didn't allow a sixth goal. Um, but yeah, I mean, that just brings us back to the conversation of like, at some point, I mean, yeah, the team has been winning with Huso. But at a certain point, is it really going to, if this, let's, let's say if this keeps happening, you know, if they continually have games like this, who so in particular, like at some point you just, 
you test the waters with Reimer and Lyon and see if, you know, they earn more starts. Like, <clears throat> even if it's just a game, man, like, you know what I mean? Like if, if Huso goes out there and has three bad games in a row and Lyon still has a good game somewhere in the middle, um, why would you not give, like, you can tell Huso even be like, Hey, still your net and everything's, you know, whatever. But like, we're going to give you a game off. Reimer's not going to go back to back or two and three games. So we're going to give a, a, a shout to Lyon. Like it, I, I, I think I think at this point that's more likely. I mean, obviously today's game we're we're gonna see Lyon in that and he hasn't had a bad game yet. So naturally now he'll have those worst game of the season because right. we're having this conversation. But it, it's uh I, I yeah, I I would really like to this goalie duo has not been like the, the goalie situation in Detroit, I'll say, just very generalized, has not been nearly good enough to carry three goalies and have the third one not get a single minute of playing time so far. Agreed. I agree. Um, it's almost with – I agree. I'll, 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 I'll end it there. We got to get to another break, and we got to preview the Montreal Canadiens. We said it all. That needs to be said, I believe. So uh, we'll take a quick, quick break, and when we return, preview the game against the Montreal Canadiens. As a business owner, you realize there are times when receivables might fall behind, but that doesn't mean you need to fall behind on vendor payments, payroll, or rent. For more than 25 years, Parkview Advance has helped business sec businesses secure working capital. From $5,000 to $1.5 million, Parkview Advance can approve your working capital in as little as 24 hours. It's a much easier process than you might imagine. We invite the many entrepreneurs that are locked on NHL fans to learn more by calling us at 203-675-0071 or go to parkviewadvance.com. Again, that number is 203-675-0071. If your business needs working capital, call Parkview Advance today. Parkview Advance, helping businesses with their working capital. Go to parkviewadvance.com. Segment three, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are going to move on now to the Montreal Canadiens uh, matchup, which, by the way, is a confirmed James Reimer start since we were just talking goalies. Might as well lead off with that. James Reimer gets his fifth start of the season, I believe. He's been good through the first four. He's had a shutout, uh, the one against Columbus. Uh, and in terms of if we're counting softies, I've, I can only remember one softie that he's given up, and that was in his last start. Uh, I believe that was the what the first goal against the New York I Islanders. Think you should watch every single hockey game and you should create a stat that's just softies and it's just your subjective opinion. There's no like, oh, the puck has to be going at this speed or like this has to happen. It's just your subjective opinion. And we put this column on like hockey ref. And it's like an official stat, and it's just softies per sixty. That Brian says, right? Per si softies <laughs> per sixty, right? Yes, I think that I think that this is a good idea. Well, and then you go to look at the, uh, like you know how it usually will show you the little formula if you hover over the stat. Yeah, and then it'll like for the formula it'll just be because Brian says so. No, it's just a picture of your face. Yeah, there you go. That's even better. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, Scotty, the Red Wings are playing the Montreal Canadiens right now. They are currently five, five and two coming off a loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs in a shootout. So of course, both teams got at least a point in that one. Uh, they started off kind of hot. Now they're beginning to regress kind of similar to what we're seeing out of the Detroit Red Wings right now. Uh, they are led by Cole Caulfield with 12 points in 12 games, four goals, eight assists, Sean Monahan, Monahan who, uh, I don't know, man, if you follow Sean Monahan very closely, but that dude has. He's basically their Robbie Fabry. They got him from Calgary last year. This dude has had injuries and surgeries all across his body. Yet he still got 11 points in 12 games played this season. Sure Finally healthy for a, just any stretch of hockey. And he's producing. Nick Suzuki, their captain, 10 points, 12 games. Goaltending-wise, Jake Allen and Sean Montembeau are uh, splitting the workload, both of the six games each. 9-10 save percentage for Jake Allen. Montembeau, Montembeau, if whatever, which one it is, this French names always trip me up. Any, basically the French, Swedish, Finnish, Russian, they're all going to make me trip, uh, trip me up. But he's got a 902 save percentage. And so uh, they got a pretty decent goalie tandem. And I listen, we both predicted them to come in last place in the division, Scotty, but we both also said that they're 
in a couple of years with their prospect pool, they could be a, a sneaky good team. And, you know, you see the flashes, flashes of it early in the season of the youth that they have. Yeah, man, they're coming like they, they are, that that's a really good core and you, I enjoy watching them play hockey just because of that. Like it's a, it's the early stages of a, a future core, right? Like they, they still have uh, an, a, just vicious lack of depth we'll call it uh they, they really struggle with like depth scoring and the further you go down the lineup card the the shallower it gets and i still think they're going to finish last place in the division but um they they really do have a a nice core they have a pretty solid top line as you mentioned there like they got some talent there they got a decent uh goalie duo so far this year pretty solid like they um I don't know, man. I, I kind of like the the brand that they are trying to build there. And I, I still think it's a year or two, probably closer to two, maybe even more. I, I think, you know, until they're like a top end, top end team, they're still a ways away. But the fact that you can see the personality in the core of this team, like really take shape is uh, that's like an exciting time to be a fan. All right. Just when you look at uh, some teams here doing the same thing. So, yeah, I, uh, I I think this isn't a team. This is no longer the the Habs team that you, you know, like you roll in there and you just go, all right, well, this is a win no matter what. Uh, it should still be a win. The Red yeah. Wings are a better roster. You, If you lose, that is a failure. Uh, but this isn't the the gimme game that it, that it maybe has been in the past. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, this is still a team that you are quite simply better roster yeah. up and down. Uh, but they're not a team that you can go in. I mean, not that even in years recently, like with the Arizona Coyotes, what last year, two years ago, something like that, the Coyotes beat you like nine to two or something Correct. ridiculous like that. Not that you should ever be like, this is an easy win, but they are a tougher team than they were, but they are still, uh, the Red Wings are still a better roster than them. They got a handful of injuries as well. Raphael, Harvey, Pinard, uh, Chris Weidman, David Savard, Kirby Doc, all out to start the season. Obviously, Carey Price out too. He'll he's being he's LTIR retired at this point. Um, so they got a they got a handful of injuries as well. While the Red Wings are relatively healthy, uh, I think the only major injury that they have right now is Robbie Fabry. And I guess that's not even quite accurate anymore because he's back and he's off the IR, just whether or not he plays, he's iffy for tomorrow's game as we put I next to his name, as Scotty would put it. So, I mean, you're the healthier team. You're the better roster. Um, they're kind of middle of the pack in every single statistical category you can think of. Uh, they're like 24th in the league in terms of Corsi four. Let me get, double check that right now. So the 21st percent, 21st in the league in shot attempts percentile. So they have 510 shot attempts for 555 shot attempts against in, um, in Corsi at five on five, they're like 24th in four and like 17th and against giving them 21st. Funnily enough, Red Wings ranked 25th. So they're actually worse than the Montreal Canadiens at shot attempts per game, which is why this is such an important game for the Red Wings to try and like rectify that and get back to simplifying their game in the first period, as Derek Lillian put it earlier in the game. Uh, shots for like actual shots that make it through again, they're like second half of the league and then power play and penalty kill middle of the league on both power play wise. The Red Wings are ranked 10th now after um, not scoring a single goal on their power play over six against the Rangers, 25% on the season. The Canadians are 14th with 20 and then penalty kill Scotty. The Red Wings rank currently 13th in the league and the Montreal Canadians are all the way down all the way down, all the way up. I'm not finding them. Where are they at? Are they above the Red Wings? Where's the Jeopardy music? This is crazy. Where's the Jeopardy music? 23rd. Okay, my mind, my brain could not find them. They, I was like, I knew they were down there earlier <laughs> when I checked, but I had lost them because you have to refilter it when you want to find them again. Yeah, yeah. So 23rd in the penalty kill. So at five on five, Ancho Canadians, slightly better, but not like, Hugely better team. You're better than them at special teams, but not by a wide margin outside of penalty kill. This is a winnable game. Like this is a game where you need to absolutely bounce back. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, it, I would. I would 100 percent agree. I think you need to. Do you need to bounce back? This is a again. You, there, there's a completely different outlook on this Rangers game that just happened on Tuesday. If you go in and you beat. Montreal and you beat why can I never remember who the other team we're playing is dude Columbus goodness um if you go and you beat those two teams I think that says more about Columbus than it does about you <laughs> <laughs> if you go and beat those two teams it's that's 
three wins in four games with a win over Boston. Like that's pretty good. And then just a stinker, right? Like that's a, that's a pretty good four game stretch where as if you don't take advantage of these next two games, it's going to be a completely different outlook on what the, the impact of that Rangers game really was and how real that was. So um, yeah, I, this is a, a very important game, not for like, Oh, like the, you know, the, the Habs are one of the best teams in the NHL or anything, but it's very important to get a win back under your belt considering the game you're coming off. Well, and so let's get into it, right? Like we, we broke down their best scores. We broke down statistically where they're at, uh, their injuries kind of talked a little bit about where, where this team is at as a whole. So what are the keys to victory? What, how do you beat, how do you respond after the Rangers game and ensure you beat the Canadians? I mean, maybe this is like kind of a cheapy, but like, I would love to score in the first period. That'd be super cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we could get out to a hot start. Uh, that would be, that'd be really, really nice considering we have not done that very much uh, this season. So I, I think that that's for me, it's not going to like, it's impossible to win without that clearly, but um, I think that that would go a really long way if they could jump out to an early lead. Yeah. The first bullet point I had written down for my three keys was start on time, which I think those two go hand in hand. I don't think they're separate points because to start on time means getting out on top, you know? Yeah. Um, not necessarily. You can have a really good, like the game against Boston, you can have a really good start to the period and still be down to nothing. Um, but starting on time is going to be key in this game. And my, my second key of the game would be top lines got to score. I mean, obviously they produced in the Bruins game. Lucas Raymond had a power play goal. Lucas uh, Dylan Larkin had a goal as well. And to bring got a secondary assist, but outside of that game, since the Red Wings began to lose, they haven't, they haven't produced a lot of offense started off very hot, but even though they're the only offensive line that has consistently been producing shot, like outnumbering their opponents in shot attempts for when they're on the ice, they haven't put up any goals and it's not for lack of effort. Like I still think the line that goes out there is still the, the one line on this team that is consistently the best, better line on the ice. You know, they're not, they're the only line that's not getting overwhelmed when they're out there, but they haven't been putting up the points. There's been a lot of missed shots. There's been a lot of post sit. There's been a lot of whiffs. If they can just get back to clicking the way they were, that'll be huge. The Red Wings. So you need the first line to show up. You finally started to get scoring depth showing up. In the game against the Rangers and the game against Boston, now you just need the first line to also be showing up at the same time. <laughs> you got to click. Let's go. Absolutely. Uh, third, third key, man. What do you have? Anything else? I mean, again, <laughs> I feel like this is really on brand with how uh, how the team's been playing lately. But um, I think Reimer staying hot is like a relatively easy one as well, man. I, I. And I guess that's somewhat one in one with like to get off to the hot star just because one of the biggest knocks against Huso has been like the early kind of softy goal. And uh, I, I think obviously this is Reimer in that, not Huso. So maybe it's a different story. He's been great this year, Reimer has. Um, but I, I think uh, I think him having a good game, just given how porous the defense was against the Rangers. If that's even close to the same product, Reimer's going to have to have a good game. I guess on the flip side, you could just say maybe play better defensively and not allow Montreal to just kind of moonwalk into the slot all night would be really cool too. That's what I was going to say. Your one, your three B there that you just mentioned was what I was going to go with is suppress shots, man. Yeah. Uh, you're you're getting so heavily outshot in every single game. The Red Wings are currently seventh in the league. Um, at shot attempts against per game, which is not a good. That's not a stat you want to be at the top <laughs> with. Right. Uh, they've had 622 shot attempts against at even strength. They got to get better at suppressing shot attempts, which means playing better defense and preventing zone entries and possessing the puck more as a whole. Like it, it, there's more to it. Suppressing shot attempts means more than just like laying the body on the line and blocking shots. Because by the way, Blocking a shot still counts as a Corsi against. That still counts as a shot attempt against. Um, not if you use Fenwick, which is a different stat, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Basically, yes. Play better defensively. Bang. <laughs> Bang. Uh, anyway, Scotty, you have any final thoughts? We ball. We do ball. Um, oh, do you want to do first goal? We just kind of randomly say it. We don't really keep track of it. Who do you think? To bring it. 
he needs to get right. We need a big goal. We need to get. We need to bring it to be scoring goals if this team's going to win. He needs to be a difference maker. So I think he's going to get back on the horse. Named Friday. That's right. Um, <laughs> that bit is like two years old. Yeah. Um, it's a deep cut. It's a deep, deep cut. Man, I'm going to go with David Perron. There you go. Uh, we'll be back with a new episode tomorrow. Same time, same place. It's your team every, every day. day.